What up y'all, today I want to talk about why I bought a Sony a7C and why I'm convinced it is the best content camera on the market right now. Let's get into it. I'm going to break this video down into a couple different parts. I'm going to start with the reasons why I bought this camera, why I love it, the pros, the cons, and then stay to the end for my ideal setup, what I added to this camera to make it the perfect vlog setup. <music> why did I buy the a7C in today's market? There are a lot newer cameras, there's a lot more cameras that are more feature packed and more exciting, especially from the new stuff from Canon. Those cameras are, woo, I really like those. I got this camera used and that's a big deal. Right now they're on sale for $16.99, brand new, body only and they're readily available. A lot of cameras are sold out. But I bought this camera used for about $1,350 and that's something key to think about. This camera is a little bit soft on the market because not only is it basically just an a7 III, which there are a ton of those used now because there's a7-4s, but that value leverage also comes into play because I believe a lot of photographers, professional photographers, don't really see this camera as a viable option. And there is some justification to that. I'll get into that more in the cons. I don't know about you, but my artistic style and just shooting in general, I find that when I overcomplicate things, I tend to shoot less and I just get more frustrated and not as creative. And that especially rings true with multiple cameras and extra gear and microphones and gimbals. I just find myself getting kind of clogged down and I shoot less. Ergo, I wanted to condense my package and have an everyday carry camera on me that could shoot good 4K video, had good autofocus, has a flip out screen and a mic jack in. Those are just kind of the basics for video that I wanted to make it a usable vlog setup. And on top of those video qualities, I also wanted good image quality. So I wanted a full frame camera that had good low light capabilities good autofocus and just decent image quality that I could use in a professional setting as maybe a backup camera or a B camera. When I was looking at the market, of course, I looked at Fuji and I looked at Sony and Canon and Nikon and I didn't really find a body that would check off all of those things until I found the a7C for video. This camera brings everything you could want to table. Five axis image stabilization, although not the best. Full 4K video without significant crops or anything like that. In fact, you could shoot 4K 30. Uh, it does shoot slow motion in 1080p, but I don't use it all that much. Fully articulating flip out screen, mic jack in, real time eye tracking autofocus that doesn't go away in 4K, a la the Canon M50 series. It has all of that in a small, lightweight, compact body. This body is not significantly bigger than a ZV-E10, and it's definitely not that much heavier. It is significantly smaller than my Sony a7 IV. When I have those two bodies side by side, I do notice a pretty big difference. This a7C feels much more like a crop sensor camera, like the Canon M50s, uh, or the Fujis, or the A66 6500s, than it does the full frame counterparts of other brands. And it also has some professional level video features that you could really use this camera as a nice B camera on a job. Things like H-Log Gamma, S-Log 3, without really big crops or high ISO settings. So overall, this camera shoots really nice, crispy 4K, 100 megabit, uh, good bit depth. I mean, it just overall, bit depth, <laughs> what? It just shoots very beautiful 4K video that I really like. Now, and then going over to the still side of things, I already know that the image quality is superb in this camera because I've shot hundreds of weddings on my pair of a7 III's. Those are just my tank workhorses, and this is the exact same innards of those cameras. So image quality is nothing to scoff at. I would not hesitate at all to shoot professional gigs with this. In fact, I've already shot weddings with this specific camera right here. You know, it's got five axis image stabilization, 10 frames per second raw, uh, good you know, dynamic range. Having said all that, talking about the image and video quality, this camera is not perfect. So let's get into the cons and really, uh, the cons need to be taken with a grain of salt because a lot of them are due to the smaller, more compact form factor. And it's a big pro for me to have that smaller, lightweight body because it really lends to be an easy to use vlog camera. But that's where the cons come into place. First of all, my biggest con for this comes onto the photography side of things where it's lacking the front dial. And you see this a lot on the Sony crop sensor bodies like the A6600. It really, really bothers me because I don't know why, but my shooting style, I shoot full manual and I'm shooting in raw and I'm using that front dial to change my aperture a lot 
or shutter speed or whatever you have set up for it. And just having that manual control is uh, really limiting because now you need to use the rear dial as your second dial when shooting manual. And then if you need to change ISO, now you're two or three buttons in and you just lose a lot of the custom features that add speed when you're shooting photography, at least it adds it for me. Also, I lack a lot of the custom buttons that I really heavily rely on when shooting my full frame Sony cameras. When I want to change, you know, single point to multi-point focus systems or go from, you know, uh, AFS to AFC, I'm just one custom button away. I'm switching that on the fly and I'm in there and you can't do that with the A7C because, you know, things like the custom button on top is now gone. There's no front dial. You lose custom buttons on the side and the back. So just the overall compact nature of the body leads for worse ergonomics, less custom buttons, no front dial, and a little bit of fragility. So those are my overall flaws when in terms of design, but my number two biggest flaw also comes with the still photography side of things. It only has a single slot for your SD. So that means no redundant in-camera backups, and that's a really big flaw, especially for wedding photographers. I really don't like to ever shoot you know, commercial work or client work without having dual card slots shooting simultaneously because it gives me a peace of mind that if a card corrupts, I'm not gonna lose that whole job, especially with weddings that ring true. You know, if I'm shooting product photography or something, I could just redo the shoot on my own dime, but you can't redo a wedding and you can't redo uh, you know, event photography or something like that. So if this is your only camera that you are looking at, please be aware that you don't have the dual card slots and that should be a red flag for a lot of you guys if you're doing paid work. Next flaw I have uh, is again, more so with stills than video. I really, really hate this electronic viewfinder. It's supposed to be 2.36 million dots, but it's very, very small. Just physically speaking overall, it's really tiny and coming from any other full frame camera and then shooting this, this electronic viewfinder is gonna bug you. It's really bad. Another flaw I have is really not a flaw of the camera so much as a knock on uh, coming from the ZV-E10 or maybe the ZV-1. When talking about a vlogging setup, it's a lot easier to have a camera like the ZV-E10 that's got really good onboard mics. The onboard mics on the a7 III are basically unusable. They're complete garbage. So I constantly have to have an external micro microphone on and that adds a lot of bulk size and just overall uh, inconvenience if you will. And then really lastly, the camera does feel a little bit fragile but that's not my flaw. My flaw is that you really just can't rely on the five axis image stabilization. It was a gripe with the a7 III so this is nothing new. Really all of the Sony in-body image stabilizations are not very good and this a7C is no different. When it comes to video and stills, I mean it maybe saves me a stop on paper. I don't even know what the exact specs are for what it saves me. Um, but for videos especially, it does not smooth out your videos very much at all, if noticeable at all. And then you do, of course, you could crop digitally and you know throw a stabilized lens on. But even with this optical stabilized lens that I have on this right now, my videos are still really shaky handheld. So when it comes to things like vlogging, it is something to note you're not gonna get as smooth footage as you are. So you have to run it into software in post or maybe even throw a gimbal on there uh, because I just don't like this five axis image stabilizer. A uh, little side. Side note, this Rode Video Go 2 is outstanding. It is a superb mic. Uh, I will use it for my test footage, which I'm gonna show you the vlogging setup test footage right now. All right, so this is my vlogging setup for the A7C. I have the uh, F4 10 to 18 optical stabilized lens on here. I have the Video Mic Go 2 plugged in, and I just have a little Joby GorillaPod on here. I'm just handheld, so there's no like stabilization. It's whatever the camera built-in stabilization is and the optical stabilization in the lens. So let's take a look at how this looks. So this first shot, the stabilization is turned off in camera, so this is just the stabilization that is in the lens. And you can see it's not the greatest. I mean, you're still gonna see some, some shakes and jitters but I'm just walking normally how does this look I have optical stabilization turned on in body plus the stabilization that is on the lens now how are we looking here this is again just handheld so this is me walking completely normal do we see some jitters or is it still not enough and interestingly like in the ZVE 10 and the ZV1 you can go in and set digital stabilization in camera to have like normal modes or active modes or completely 
off and in the a7c you don't have that it's just steady shot on or steady shot off so you are limited with your control now i know this is going to sound terrible but just for point of reference this is the road mic without the optional wind muff and this is with minimal i'd say medium mild wind and you get a lot of wind noise with these mics so i do love them but you do need the optional wind muff to get any practical sound out of it and how does it look in the corners do if i put myself in the corner of this shot do you have wonkiness does it look a little weird I think it looks pretty good overall. I really, I like the size and compact nature of this lens. Now it is, it gets a little bit weird. Like if I go all the way out to 10 millimeters, it gets, you know, a little bit weird. It can get really weird in the corners and stuff. But even then, if you stay in the middle of the shot, you're looking pretty good. But I like to go, go in to about, you know, 15, 16 millimeters. That's not 15, 16, we're going right there, about 15 millimeters. And I think it's a pretty good looking shot and it's small, compact, and then you do get that built-in stabilization in the lens as well. So I love this setup for vlogging as a whole. I throw it on shutter priority, let the camera do the work. I would put an ND filter on here right now, but I actually forgot it. So shame on you, Dominic. But how do you guys think? I love this little setup. So that's the end of this vlogging test. Let's go back in the studio. How good is that mic though? Oof. $99. I'm always on the search for the perfect vlogging setup. And I'm actually, I think I found it with this. I'm really, really happy with it. So unconventional, a uh, little against the grain here. I actually went with a crop sensor lens. Now I did this to save size and space, but still get a wide angle. Uh, if you've shot any of the full frame wide angles from Canon or Sony, they're gigantic. Even like I have a Tamron, I think it's like a 16 to 28 wide angle, 2.8 lens. Like that lens is really big compared to this. This is the Sony 10 to 18 F4 optical stabilized lens. Uh, it is a bit pricey. It comes in about seven, $800. I got this one used for $500 and I really, really love this lens for vlogging. Now it is a little bit wonky on the full frame because if you're shooting at like 10, 12 millimeters, uh, it's really wide. You get some distortions around the edges and some softness. Uh, so I recommend shooting at like 14, 15 millimeters, which is really nice for vlogging anyway. It's a good crop. Even at 16 or 18 mils, it's wide enough where you can still do a lot of vlogging with it. But this is an optical stable lens and it's a really really small you could see just the form factor in general is not very big this overall setup with the video mic go to it is one of the smallest highest quality mics on the market today for, for the price point of $99 I'm gonna drop a video specifically on that mic and testing it versus other mics here soon. And then I just pair that up with this little uh, Manfrotto Pixie mini tripod. Uh, I don't like the screw on, I wish it had a quicker. Drop me a comment if you know of a better setup for vlogging. I think this is the best vlogging setup on the market right now, especially for the price. Let's talk more for those starting a YouTube channel or those just getting into content creation. I think there's a lot of people out there that are maybe getting into photography and looking to make the jump to a full frame camera. That's where I really recommend this a7C. It's the perfect first jump into full frame because of the price, the value, and the quality that you're getting and just the overall usability. It's the perfect like jack of all trades type camera. This camera can shoot your TikTok reels, it can shoot your Instagram photos, it could shoot a little bit of client work and then shoot your YouTube behind the scenes video all in one day, all in one small convenient package. You've got, you know, Bluetooth, NFC, Wi-Fi capabilities. You can shoot those over to your phone, get those posted right away. So this camera is a huge thumbs up for me. Do consider the cons that I mentioned. And if you guys have more cons for this camera and why this isn't more readily talked about or more popular in the camera game, drop me a comment below. Most importantly, remember, hit me with a thumbs up and subscribe. If you enjoyed or I brought you any value at all, hit me with a thumbs up and click the links below if you wanna check out more reviews or just to help out my tiny little channel that is growing. I appreciate y'all. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.